guys uh, welcome back to my channel uh, today i am back with my another tutorial on aws so as we all know that amazon uh, provides services uh, as a uh, as a cloud and uh, it it offers uh, three types of services mostly infra as a service software as a service and platform as a service so anything everything is provided as a service and it makes you free uh, from thinking about the platform or the software that you are working on or or the networking systems or whatever you are using you just have to think only about uh, how you are using it you don't need to worry about uh, how the software is maintained or uh, how is this being patched or etc so um, so now you are only left with uh, focusing on your business and how you're gonna use that application okay so similarly uh, uh, Amazon uh, provides a database also as a service so uh, there are several database instances which are provided by AWS like uh, MariaDB MySQL Oracle okay so these all features are provided as a service uh, uh, by by Amazon so today uh, what we'll do is we will create a relational database in cloud uh, in AWS and we'll learn how to create it and we'll learn how to connect it okay uh, so you need a, uh, an account with uh, AWS okay so if you have it you can directly log in okay so uh, we shall learn uh, step by step manner how to create a database could be anything it could be mysql or it could be mariadb or, or oracle okay uh, and then so this is my channel uh, linux unix x also i share uh, tutorials for uh, linux unix and uh, for open systems like python and and aws okay cloud computing so please subscribe if you haven't subscribed it yet and uh, okay so let's get started with uh, creating a database okay uh, so here the best advantage of this uh, cloud uh, database is that uh, you have you don't have to worry about the the size of the database you don't need to worry about the the backing the the backup uh, maintenance like you know when to take the backup or or how to take a backup uh, or uh, everything will be done by the by the Amazon and you just have to focus on your application your business and uh, anything and everything will be taken care by AWS okay so let's get started so we'll just click on create database so here you have to select a region first of all so I have selected uh, Mumbai Asia Pacific okay uh, so here there are six options given by by aws to create a database instance so you can create a mariadb you can create a mysql or oracle or microsoft sql server also so here as we will use the the free tier option because uh, I, uh, we have signed up uh, with the free tier usage so just select on this and then it will list only the ones which are uh free tier okay so if you select on this it will say it is it is saying amazon aurora is not eligible for free tier so let's go with the free tier option so let's just create a maria db uh, database okay so here some brief is given about this database okay and then we'll click on next so it is giving you a 32 gb database size and then it, it gives you with the feature of uh, automatic automated backup recovery and all that okay and uh, it has uh, supports general purpose memory optimized and burst of performance okay so we'll create our next okay so here we, we have to specify the database details okay uh, so it is a MariaDB license model just keep it as it is default DB version is also keep it as it is the latest always giving you the latest version you can have a uh, click on info for more details okay uh, so okay so here instance class let's keep it as db t2 marco uh, micro 
Okay, uh, so we are using the micro instance, uh, which, is, which means we are using one CPU and one gigabyte RAM. Okay, fine. Let's go ahead and okay. So here uh, we have to specify a storage. So let just be 20 GB setting. You have to give a database instance. Okay, uh, so you, you you have to specify a DB instance. So let's say uh, what's what's the instance you wanna you wanna name it okay so just let's say uh, shanky okay is my database instance name and then you have to specify some username and password for your instance okay so i'll just i'll just enter the username and password for any instance you have to create you have to specify a username and password so if you click on info you will see specify alphanumeric string use the master user login to start defining all user objects permissions etc okay so we click on next then there are some advanced setting which you need to put so here uh, there is a uh, vpc where you want to put this database so you just select uh, default vpc or if you have created a new virtual private cloud vpc in your region you can select that okay so i am just i'll just go with the default one then again submit ma group also will use the default one public accessibility we have to select it as yes because if you do not select it as yes you won't be able to access the database uh, from anywhere in the world okay so let's just because if you give it as a yes it will give you an ip address using which you will be able to connect to the database okay then there is an availability zone so uh, let it be just no preference i mean it is asking you that which uh, availability zone you want to keep this database in so let's just be no preference then uh, then vpc security group okay so just select create new vpc security group have rules authorizing connection so it has some rules which will authorize the connections to the database instance okay so then okay so now once you create this database instance there is a you have to specify some database name inside that instance so if you don't specify the instance name uh, uh, it will not create a database so because once you log into this instance there will be a database already created if you give a name over here if you don't give a name it will not create it so just uh, we post will give a name so uh, let's say uh, i'll just give uh, shanky db this is my database name okay in, under that instance and we'll use the default port number which is 3306 then we'll go for the next options also as default and there uh, okay so here backup potential so select the number of days after that amazon rds should not retain so you you can specify how, for how many days you want to retain the database okay 10 days 7 days so we'll go for 7 days okay backup window no preference okay uh, then monitoring also uh, don't enable it because if you enable monitoring maybe you will have to pay some charges to uh, cloud service provider okay then we'll go ahead and maintenance also uh, auto minor version upgrade okay let it be on because if anything is uh, upgrade, any, any upgrade hap happens in the database instance that will be done okay and then maintenance window no preference go ahead and enable deletion protection so if you check this button uh, you will not be able to delete the database okay so this will allow uh, this will prevent the database from being deleted accidentally okay so for now we'll just uh, uh, don't will not enable this database because after creating the database we can uh, delete it also later okay so we'll just click on create database and you see that uh, the database instance is being created okay uh, so it will take some time because uh, you know depends on your uh, network speed and all okay uh, so once you click on this view db instance detail it will take you to the amazon relational database dashboard 
so here you see this is my MariaDB instance and here you see the DB instance status is showing as creating which means it is not yet available okay so uh, uh, by the time the database instance becomes available to use what we'll do is we'll learn how to create to the database so now, now let's say we have created the database in the cloud now we want to connect to that database so to connect to this MariaDB instance uh, we you need to download this Heidi SQL okay so I have this Heidi SQL already downloaded in my system so if you uh, if you haven't downloaded it uh, you can download it anywhere uh, I mean from online okay so Heidi SQL uh, okay so once you download it you can run this uh, Heidi SQL.exe okay so it will uh, start a new session okay <sighs> fine so we'll just try to connect to the database let's just go and check again if this is done okay so it is showing as still it is showing as creating we'll just wait for some time Okay, so now the database has become available and uh, you can see this is my database that we have created and the status is available. So now we can start and connect to the database. Okay, so we ha I have started this uh, Heidi SQL. Okay, so uh, if you click on this database instance, then you will get some um, more details like connectivity, monitoring, configuration, etc. Okay, so once you uh, open this Heidi SQL, you, you need to enter the host name, IP address, username, password. Okay, so here you can give the endpoint name, which is the host name, as here, and you can connect it. Okay, so this is the host name. Then the, you have to specify the username and then the password. Okay, uh, password. And then the port number which is by default 3306 then you can specify the databases which you have created while creating the instance so you see I have created this shanky DB okay so I have selected the shanky DB and now I can just you know uh, you can just open it okay once you click on open it will open this uh, it will try to connect okay save it okay so now you see i have connected to this, this instance and then we have one database which is created already so while still while creating the instance if you don't specify the database name it will it won't create anything here and then you will have to create a new database all the way so now it is already created fine so now you see we have made a connection to the database we go back to the databases and if you go and see here it is saying zero connections okay it should it should say one connection okay maybe it is it will say after refresh okay so now we have created the database let's just uh, you know we'll quickly uh, create a table and we'll just try to you know uh, run and run some query okay let's just create a student table let's say student name name will be you can specify a type of this name and then again you can specify ID ID will give as as big end for long integer and then you can give uh, anything let's say address okay again address will give as as vercat okay so this is how let's say if you want to specify this id as a primary key when specify this id as a primary key then you cannot allow null for id and address name also don't allow null this way you can create uh, a table let's just save it okay and then okay so if you open this database if you open this table there is no data okay so we'll just uh, let's say it's insert uh, into student 
right so if you just press control space bar it will give you a help to auto complete so let's just say my name id okay let's just give one two three four something and then address okay so at bath okay and we'll just try to run this query okay uh, okay so you see insert command one row affected okay now we'll again run this command and we'll try to again execute the same query we'll throw some error as uh, it cannot accept duplicate value for the primary key so we'll just change the value and we'll try to insert again another data okay let's say mumbai okay so we'll just try to run it one more time so now you see the data is inserted okay let's try to run the select query select star from student right okay so okay now we have the data inserted in the table right this is how you can create a table and run queries on the table which is present on your cloud okay you come back and this is my database okay we'll just go back to the dashboard and so we learned how we how to create a database and we we try learn to connect to the database using aria db and then okay uh, i'll just let the refresh complete and then if i click on this instance so you see uh, you see this is the current activity dashboard if i go to the dashboard do you instance so ideally it should uh, say that the connections current activity it will it okay it's still running this one okay so this is how uh, we can create a database so now here uh, you have some action points like you want to delete the database or you want to take a snapshot okay so so uh, it's a it's a good practice to delete the instance uh, after you have used it to avoid any uh, charges okay so if i uh, if i just if i stop it if i stop the database so you see there is just a problem actually is there is some network connection error okay uh, that's why i am not able to uh, perform any action here okay So that's all guys in this tutorial uh, uh, so you what you have to do is next you have to uh, just go and delete the database uh, from the action menu and to avoid any charges further and uh, thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to never miss a video from my channel Linux Linux AX thanks for watching